Today we're going to take a look at customizing RAD Pivot Grid with group filtering. So now that you've learned how to use RAD Pivot Grid and work with the RAD Pivot Field List, we're going to further customize RAD Pivot Grid with group filtering. So group filtering allows you to find items matching the criteria and adjust the data automatically. You can apply filters based upon grand total or the names of the groups. We're going to take a look at a couple of these today. So let's go ahead and let's jump back into Visual Studio 2012 and get started. So here we are, we're back in Visual Studio 2012 and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to run this project. But before I do, in our last demo we had the RAD pivot grid listed here and then we had the RAD pivot field list in this box. We're just going to reuse this box today to put a list box where we can show you some of the different types of filtering. So if I go ahead and I just run this application as is and we scroll out here then we're going to see we have our main window, we have notebooks, we have pens, we have pencils, exactly what you saw in the first one but we're going to begin to start adding some different types of filters. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I'm just going to close the existing uh, application that we have and I'm going to come out here to my project and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go add and I'm going to go down here to class. So under class I'm just going to give this the name of filter item and then press OK. So now we actually have our class created. I am going to replace the existing class that's already in here and I'm going to paste in a code snippet. So in this code snippet, before we get started, I'm just going to go ahead and fix my using statements here. So for group filter, we can see that that uses telerik.pivot.core.groupfilter and then we have a collection here and that's going to use our system.collections.object model. So I've added two classes here and we're going to be able to get access to this in just a second. So we have a class called filter item that has two items in it. It has a display name which is going to give us some sort of name describing what we're going to do in the filter and then it has a group filter and as I said before this is just the group filter that is built into telerik.pivot.core.groupfilter. So I've went ahead and added a filters collection and then a collection on the filter items and then we just have an empty constructor here. That's okay, we're going to add some more stuff in just a moment. So now that that's in place, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go back over to my main window.xaml. And just so everybody can see this, I'm just going to scroll my screen up just a little bit here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an XML namespace for system. So XML namespace SYS is going to be our CLR namespace for system, assembly MS core lib. We're going to use this in just a moment when we start setting up our filter. So this is going to allow us to define certain things. And underneath that I'm going to set up another XML namespace to just my local. So I'm going to go XML namespace local equals and we're going to type rad pivot grid getting started and that should be enough for that. So underneath my Windows resources there's a few things I'm going to add here but first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build the solution make sure we don't have any errors so far. So far the build has succeeded. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come underneath my Windows resources and I'm just going to type in local and I'm going to use my filters collection and I'm going to give it a key here of filters. After that, we'll just close that tag out just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my first filter item. Now my first filter item is not going to actually do anything but remove whatever filter is currently in place. So I'm just going to paste that in. So we have local filter item with a display name which is the property that we had just created inside of our filter item and it's just going to say none and then of course this is the less than or the greater than sign that's just in XAML. Let's go ahead now and set up one a little bit more slightly complex. So the next one that we're going to add is going to be a local filter item display name. The name is in the list 
March or April. So from there you can see we're using a filter item dot group filter and then a label group filter. We're setting a condition that includes these items which is going to be month group month three and then month equals four. So we're going to be including March and April here. So we're going to go ahead now and apply one other filter. So this is a filter for the labels and our second filter item is going to be for our grand total. So in this instance we're going to have a display name of the grand total is greater than 1330 and as you can see here we're setting up a filter item dot group filter. We're setting an aggregate index set to zero we're giving it a condition. We're saying is greater than pivot dot comparison condition dot then and then we're giving it a double and we defined the sys just up here a little bit earlier. So if I scroll back down you can see we're giving it 13.30 and then of course we're just closing out of the rest of these tags. So the only other thing to add here is we need to add in a list box in this field right here to actually allow the user to filter these as they wish. So I'm going to scroll down just a tad and in our last sample we had the pivot listed here and then we had pivot field list. This time I'm just going to use that space and I'm going to add in a simple list box here. So I paste in this and you can see we have a list box. We're giving it a name of filter selection. We're giving it the item source of filters which matches this filters up here. Then as we scroll on down just a tad bit here you can see I've added a selection changed event but I haven't added that in yet. We have removed the horizontal scroll bar visibility and then we're setting the grid.column to 1. Inside of this we're including an item template that has a data template that's just simply binding to our display name. And the display name, of course, is listed here, here, and the last one is listed here. And then finally, we're just going to wrap some text and we'll see our margin. So if we scroll down just a tad bit here, you can see that's already been placed uh, on the designer for us. So the last thing to do in this simple example is to go ahead and add a little bit of code behind. So I'm going to double click on my main window.xaml.cs and I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit make sure that we're out of this method and we'll go ahead and drop in the selection changed event so I'll paste that in here so you'll be able to see here that we have filter selection selection changed we're setting a local data source provider it's the same sort of thing we've been doing right here the whole time and then we have a data provider equals this dot resources local data provider which of course is defined if we look in our XAML you'll see that listed here under our pivot as local data provider so then we're doing just a simple check here to see if it's null or not and then we're setting our filter item on named filter this dot filter selection dot selected item as filter item and then a data provider dot column group descriptions and this is going to be zero so it's going to be the very first one dot group filter equals filter dot group filter and then of course we're just going to simply call a refresh on data provider okay so let's go ahead and let's run this application now so I'm going to begin by going ahead and hitting the start button and again I'm going to expand the screen out here so we have three simple filters that has been created um, the first one that we're going to start with is the name is in the list March or April. So we can see we have a bunch of different names listed here. We're only going to select March and April on this one. So if we go ahead and we click it, then you see the rest of the months of the year have been removed and that filter has been applied. If I go ahead and select none, then you're going to see that the data has been refreshed and that all of the data is available now. So the next filter that we're going to take a look at is the grand total is greater than 13.30. So you can see uh, in the notebook the average of price. We have a couple of different 
prices listed here as well as the average uh, pin of price and you can see these sums total average of price and the total sums listed below so let's go ahead and let's select that and we will see that we filtered the data down just to February, March, June, and July. So you'll see down here the total average of price 13.33, 13.50, 13.35, and 13, another 13.35. And again, I can remove that filter remembering that uh, February, March, June, and July match that, and we can see that that filter applied successfully. So thank you very much for watching, and please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos, and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. Also feel free to follow me on Twitter, at MV Crump. This is Michael Crump, signing off. Thank you.